Well, I have to say this. Hello, my friends. <laughs> Every time I do a video that I don't do the hello, my friends, I always get a couple of comments on Facebook mostly saying I missed that. <laughs> so anyway, I am back. It's uh, 11 o'clock and I'm going to do a little bit of turning today. So I have an old piece over here and I believe this might still be some of the carrot wood that I got when I first started turning. So is it going to offer something? You better believe it it will. It's just we don't know what it will offer. It's a no log. The bark has been completely uh, separated. It has some wormholes going through here. It has a little bit of a split that goes down on the pit. Um, so I'm going to do not a natural edge. I'm just going to do a nice regular bowl and a normal orientation. And, uh, well, as far as speed, it's cut to somewhat of a round piece, so it should not be too difficult to turn. I'm going to turn it this way. This will be the bottom of the bowl, and this will be the top. So the first thing I'm going to do, once I mount it on, is create a tendon over here. And, as always, spur drive just stuck inside the chuck. So, find center more or less, and I will finalize it. Once I put it up here, this is basically just to hold it where I can balance it off with one hand. So I can move things around, my tool rest and all that stuff. Then, bringing up my tailstock, all I want to do is not even any pressure, just enough to, for it to hold it and I see how heavy it is on offset if it's way too heavy on one side then I make a small adjustment and I try it again and there we go well balanced piece is much easier for you to start start with than something that's really off and you're going to be battling all the way through Speed is at 720 RPM. And this wood is fairly dry. It's been out there for at least three years.
this might turn out to be something different from where uh, I initially said which was a bowl but that's the fun about wood turning you should not lock yourself up into what your initial idea was and let your mind develop and grow as you're starting to turn it that's the fun that's the most fun of, of it all I'm going to sharpen this up pretty quick and a lot of you ask me at times Al have you done anything on sharpening very little I've done very little on sharpening because my sharpening is not traditional I don't use fancy tools uh, it's a shop made you can see how I did this Captain Eddie has something on how to do it with PVC as well uh, you can watch a few videos out there that will offer you and the angle of the this pipe over or this all thread is about 45 degrees to the handle so it's you know there is not a specific angle on it because no matter what it is you adjust it one time with the distance so if it's a little bit more steep you bring it back or you bring it close a little bit and you get it more or less where you got maybe at 20 degrees 30 degrees up to the stone so like I said if it was longer if it was taller or whatever I'd be able to adjust it by bringing it further back extending this further whichever way but whatever you got this is just a tool that's going to allow you to make the same edge every time so that's what it is Now the stones on my grinder are six inch stones so therefore it might be different from yours you might be using an eight inch stone so that would change the angle that you would put let's see how that did it was a, a quick sharpening quick sharpening and that should give me a nice cut on it, on here
Yorkshire Grit original. So anyway, that's the idea for this particular piece. It's going to be a piece for potpourri to go on the outside and this will make a place for some uh, flower arrangements, dry flower arrangements. Wood turning is a fascinating hobby and uh, I hope everybody gets into it. I think, you know, um, I think I've done my share in getting some of you to turn. Uh, so I'm not quite uh, the Bob Ross of wood turning because Bob Ross is known to get more people painting wood oils than any other artist out there. Uh, so I am far from being that. But I'd like to think that I've done my share and contribution to getting people to wood turning. And I must say the uh, one, like I said, I learned from many and, uh, you know, uh, appreciated many turns that I saw. The inspiration as far as to my style, the way I turn, and one of the wood turners that I watched that I thoroughly enjoyed was Robbie Woods Turner. He probably inspired me more than any other turner. And yes, he did some... My style is not his, but my style developed, I think, from his. Um, and you know i liked bobby the wood turner because he was not full of himself uh really was a humble person who did his turnings did a great job and uh, i just appreciated him for that i just want you to enjoy it and perhaps motivate you and get out there and do some turning your likes your thumbs up I greatly appreciate it, as well as your comments, of course. Well, here's a piece. Beautiful, beautiful wood grain. I'm not so sure about the design. It's what I decided to make out of it. But, you know, that's the whole thing. You know, you should see which way something is going to go or how it's going to look for you It'll come up with something slightly different it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect it doesn't mean it's the greatest thing it's just something that you're trying and you're trying to see where can you go with something and how does it look and occasionally like everybody you're going to create something that it's like oh, okay what was i thinking because i don't like it or you know, uh, I won't do that again. So, yeah, always experiment. Anyway, I got to this and I really don't have a way to mount this. It doesn't fit. I don't have pin jaws that I could put inside here. So, I use this quite a bit. And I think that even for this case, it will work fine. Because it will just give me a backing on this. And I will find the center as I have it there. And once I find this center, it automatically is centered in the whole piece. So, so a little bit of pressure. And like I said, once you put it. You know, you should be fairly centered, enough to go in there 
and do whatever it is that you need to do to finish up the piece. going to change this base over here and we've got that Here it is. It's a weird shape. Um, not so sure. I will do it again. But the point is to have fun and do whatever comes up. Whatever the imagination brings up at the time. Some of them will be good. Some of them won't be so good. Um, but it's all part of having fun and getting practice on the lathe. So get out there and go do some wood turning. I, the methods that I use and what I do and my rambling on and uh, talking about how much I sand or don't sand and all that stuff are not meant to be discouraging factors on what you feel you should do. 
Whatever method is working for you, by all means, go to that. And like I've said many times, the more you sand, the better the finish is going to be. There's no questions about that. But I only say, well, Al, you know, you do it. It looks okay. It looks good. So, I mean, you know, if you think it still looks good to you on the way I do it, then you can achieve the same thing by doing what I do. But if you say, Al, you know, your finish could use a little bit more help. I like it shiny. I like it, uh, you know, more defined. It's not the turning technique that's going to get you there. It's more and more sanding. Now, there was one point that you saw. I was trying to sand this bottom over here, and it didn't look to par. They, you know, to anybody's standards. Uh, it had ridges on the bottom. So, with the lathe stopped, I went in there and I saw if my scraper would be a good tool to use in there and how it would react. Am I going to be in danger? Is it going too far of a reach? Whatever. And I saw that the scraper fit just fine. Um, so I went in there with the lathe stopped, then I turned it on, and I went in there and I removed all those ridges because if you have ridges, you can be sanding till the cows come home and you're probably not going to get rid of it. <laughs> Unless you're going with 60 grit and just grinding the heck out of it. But if you got small, small little tools, marks small then your sandpaper will do it but if they are a little bit more oversized eh, you know go back in there with the cutter the cutter is the tool to get it out and most likely smooth it out whether if you use a scraper or whether if you use your uh, gouge whatever tool you have get rid of those uh, cut lines they are hard to sand it down and then if you see that you got a lot of tear out, well, then maybe you need to practice your push cuts a little bit. Push, you know, and uh, leaving cut edge. Your scraper's not going to do that. Um, but you can practice on that. So if it's just a matter that you got a little bit of tear out and you don't, haven't practiced enough or you don't know how to use the push cut method, well, you know, you're going to have a little bit more sanding, but at least you don't have ridge, uh, ridge lines going all the way around. You might only have the two end grain parts that are a little bit more tear up and you can get that with the lathe stopped and your sander get rid of that heavier uh, uh, tear out you know uh, that feels rough and then once you get rid of the majority of it then turn on your lathe and start going in there and continue going in there with your power sander until you get it all uniform and you should come up with something that looks good but if you still got any deep grooves lines in there you know you're gonna be there for a long time with sandpaper if you don't get it down at least to the shape without those ridges uh, you know it's, it's hard to get rid of those with just sandpaper anyway here it is the wood it's amazing um, it's dense and I do believe it to be still of the um, it has to be some of the carrot wood that I got back and I know you're gonna ask well I never heard of carrot wood what is carrot wood well I don't know how to uh, explain it but you can google it and you'll see exactly what I mean but it grows this little orange berry in clusters. Um, and I think that's why they call it carrot wood. It, it has a scientific name or a Latin name, but it really goes, that's the name it goes by. Uh, it's not just a local name. Um, and carrot wood is inv invasive over here in Florida. Not that I see it cut down all the time, but I do see it up. Even my yard has one in the back over there that's a decent size part of the storm came by and you know it, it broke a huge branch off it um, so it's not a strong wood but it's a hard wood once once it gets down it's uh, 
uh, not open fibers in any means. Beautiful wood. Hope you like it. We'll see you again next time. Enough yet. Who knows? Maybe out on the water. Take it easy. Hey, don't forget. If you like it, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see my next video when it comes out and you want to be notified, make sure you hit that little bell. And uh, the, you're not going to get any e emails from me or anything of that sort or from anybody else for that matter. It will just notify you when I post something. You'll get a notification on your email. Hey, Al has posted something, which happens once a week. So you can be over there and, uh, you know, like, like I said, and if you haven't subscribed, subscri subscribe, like it, thumbs up, share with your friends. A lot of yakking and nothing being said. Take care.